Modern Playbook Roundtable. I'm really excited to be joined with a number of uh, dear friends and some of the best minds in comics. Uh, to my left is... Mr. Long Short. You're goddamn right. All right. Happy to be here. <laughs> Just waking up. Um, we got some good stuff for you guys tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Rich Taylor, a.k.a. Dollar Ben. Good to see you. Um, I write a subreddit. Um, it's pretty raw right now for a new comic book day spec and a little bit of final order cutoff uh, picks. Check it out. Get at me at IG. Rich was not responsible for GameStop. If the SEC is listening. <laughs> Carter. Hey, everybody. It's your main man, Mercenot. Come holler at me. Yeah, where do we find you on YouTube? Uh, Mercenot. <laughs> Just type that shit in. <laughs> I'll pop up. Steve? So, Steve from My Bargain Comics. Steve Horn, if you're nasty. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Love it. Yeah. Mr. Horn. <laughs> I liked it the way he said Wait, I didn't like it. That was weird. <laughs> Made me feel weird. <laughs> Phil, no. talk All right. to us. Phil uh, at VintageComicsAndToys.com. Um, I have my uh, CBSI column, the back nine every week. Happy to be here. Good stuff, guys. Uh, if you're one of my two readers, uh, Steve and the other guy, uh, I write a weekly article for Comic Book Invest called The Weekend Update. Um, that's sometimes weekly. I uh, hope you had a chance to check in uh, and see me lament more about GameStop. So without uh, further ado, let's uh, get into the books. Um, you guys ready? Ready. Holy shit. This is amazing. I, I look, I, I love Sandman as much as uh, anybody who read this book growing up did not anticipate that we would get this kind of action on a 9 8 before the Netflix television series dropped. Uh, guys, what do you think? Just wait till it hits a thousand. Dude, I mean, even this, this book is a modern gem. I mean, it was only a matter of time before it took off. You start to put a television property around it and that's a recipe for explosion so i'm as shocked as you are um that said i mean i don't know how can, can you really be surprised for a book like this it's i'm actually proud of the market for once right so like it, it's a book uh, i don't have a 9 8 um but it's a book that i i think should be this expensive in 9 8 condition uh this followed casting news um, that was, uh, you know, very reliable, but uh, certainly not um, widespread across the internet. Uh, not a lot of uh, name uh, brand A-list actors uh, that are household names, you know, being swiped from uh, ABC docudramas or something. Um, but everybody seems really excited about uh, Sandman. Uh, did you guys read this book growing up? I, I I did not. Did. Read this. Yeah. Now, actually, I I, I missed it. Um, I, I think it was right uh, after I sort of dropped out of comics for a while, and and when I came back, there there was this thing called the uh, the Sandman. But you know, I think it, this makes me think because it's a DC book, and you know, later became uh, Vertigo. Um, it, you know, it, it makes me think um, in the mid '80s or early '80s, DC put in their UPC, you know, DC, you know, DC comics aren't just for kids anymore. Right. And this, this, um, you know, presents a, a pivot, um, of d defining an, an era, uh, of, uh, of comics. Right. I mean, this is a 1989 comic, but really to me, it, it defines the, the, the early nineties as much as, um, as as like the mid '90s are represented by Death of Superman, um, so it it was you know it 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 made comics, uh, you know you of course Watchmen and Dark Knight Returns preceded it, um, but you know those were both self-contained um, 
you know, mini series. That I mean, this was a long, ongoing, um, and yeah, just um, you know, it is it is just kind of iconic literary uh, in its in its own right. Yeah, I mean, I see, that, I, I'm sorry, please. I see this number, and I think okay. Collectors or speculators, investors are thinking uh, Neil Gaiman, and they're basically thinking of the past with uh, what's that one series on Stars, American Gods, and how fast those books, those characters went into the series. And then you get casting call. What is this? First Dream and First Roderick uh, Burgess. And you get casting calls, and next thing you know, boom, the number shoots up from, I think it was like six, 600, 550 to. 500 to 800, just like that. So I think speculators and investors are very bullish on Neil Gaiman titles going it to. One of, it was one of the best written runs um, in modern comics history. I mean, let's let's be honest. I mean, it was it was phenomenal. It was groundbreaking. Um, this price, given where the current modern market is, is deserved, in my opinion, for a book like this. Definitely. Yeah, high literature yeah, taught in colleges and universities across the United States of America. Uh, if you haven't done that favor to yourself, please uh, pick up a graphic novel. Uh, I think you'll really appreciate the work. Um, one last thought about this book. I, I didn't uh, pull the uh, auction result, but this is the first time in a long time that I've seen Sandman 1 sell for more money than Sandman 8. Uh, there did not appear to be uh, casting uh, news uh, surrounding uh, the character Death, who first appears in issue 8. Um, there was a lot of speculation and thereafter some lightweight confirmation that she would appear in season 1. Uh, I don't know if they're keeping her casting a secret or if uh, they just haven't cast her yet or what exactly is going on there, but uh, super excited about this one, guys. So uh, there's my one um, pick of the, of the week. Uh, super cool auction. Here's the next one. I was stunned by this one, too. Uh, if you're listening and, and you're not uh, watching us on YouTube, this is Swamp Thing number 37, the first appearance of John Constantine in CGC 8.5 condition. Uh, this copy sold for $299. Um, you know, I... I'm still used to this book being available in, you know, uh, nine two condition for about a hundred bucks raw. Um, and, and times have changed. Uh, nine eights are uh, astronomically expensive now, uh, thousands of dollars. Um, what do you guys think about this price tag? Wow, it's it's surprising, but it's not surprising. I mean, it's, you know, it's the first appearance of John Constantine and it just seems like, uh, like going back into it, investors are, are bullish on, on, on these, uh, DC characters, especially John Constantine. Wow. And let's yeah. add, it has white pages too. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've got a theory about sort of, uh, books below nine, eight, um, particularly nine sixes, you know, eight, five is, is a little ways off, but, but I think what's going to happen is, the premiums that nine eights are affording, I think, um, that's going to close, and that's not. That doesn't mean the nine eights are coming down. I think the nine sixes, the nine fours, anything below are going to start to catch up a little bit. As those nine eights get absorbed into the market, collectors are going to be have to chase something else, and it's going to be nine sixes, nine fours, nine twos, nine os, all the way down. And you know, believe it or not, in the modern market. Those lower grades below nine eights are generally there's a fewer of them, right? Nine eights oftentimes um, command sort of the the lion's share of all the graded copies. Um, once those are absorbed, I think we're going to see escalation in prices of lower grades. And I think honestly, if you're looking for return on investment, that's where you should be shopping for a lot of books. So I think this book sort of sort of. Uh, sort of verifies sort of that theory that lower grades are going to start to escalate in price here um, as as the 9.8s dry up. For that grade, I would say do your damnedest to try to find a raw. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was just shocked at this, Carter. Um, look, I don't see a lot of these books in the wild anymore. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, that's that's just the truth of it. Uh, but never in a million years did I think that you could get three hundred dollars out of an eight five. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, this book isn't super hard and high grade, right? So, I mean, the yellow cover, you know, doesn't get banged up too badly. So, um, yeah, you could certainly find your own. Um, but I think it's just a, a testament to what collectors are willing to chase and pay up for, right? I think we have to sort of be aware of that. Um, uh, but I always I always love to find those raw books and get them graded rather than chasing, chasing the graded ones. This uh, and one more point. This seems like the case of a buyer that searched high and low um, to try to find one out in the wild and just couldn't. That's what that's what that's what this seems like to me. Hmm. I, w I was stunned. Um, Dollar, you were kind enough to help us out with a, a little spec play. Yeah, this is um, you know it's a dollar bin book uh, for our listeners. This is. Uh, Crisis on Infinity Earth, and this is issue number four. This is actually John Constantine, excuse me, John Constantine's second appearance. Um, you can find this in direct uh, Canadian price variant. There's actually a Mark Jewelers insert and a newsstand variant. But point being is, is that, you know, with what the first appearance is going for and the fact that the second appearance is a 50 cent to a $3 book and high grade i think these if you see these you should definitely definitely pick them up another point there i believe this issue is also the first appearance of dr light the the hero uh female japanese uh hero dr light um who was heavily used in a lot of the justice league uh run that followed uh legends um but has been criminally underused i think for the past you know 20 years maybe even um uh longer um you know it, it's it kind of reminds me of you know katana um right. at, at least katana got a uh, suicide squad appearance but um you know when you're looking at um studios looking uh to uh for you know a diverse character base um you know you you have it and you know in in those two characters you know, uh, representing, um, uh, you know, Asian females. So, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, Rich, I think this is a, a really good bet and you never can go wrong with, uh, my personal favorite artist, you know, George Perez. So oh yeah. Look at the detail in there. Now, are you guys familiar yeah. with this book? I've seen it. Yeah, absolutely. Carter, tell them about it. Um, well, my least favorite artist of all time, Fred Hemmett, <laughs> uh, is doing the cover for this book. But we have a first preview appearance of our main man, John Constantine. Yeah, and that's that's a dollar bin book. Uh, yeah. You all can find them, snag them. Um, I don't know that anyone's going to uh, go gaga over it like they did the uh, Marvel previews 95 until... Uh, John Constantine, sorry, I forgot. Not that. <laughs> yeah, Damn it, I talked about it. Talked about it. I thought you were going to say say the DC Spotlight. <laughs> uh, also, fuck, the Mo for two. Um, all right. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but when uh, you know we get a, a John Constantine uh, live action with uh, Keanu Reeves uh, reprising his uh, Emmy Award winning, Oscar Award winning, groundbreaking Grammy Award winning. Um, something, something award winning uh, role as John Constantine, uh, you know, you never can tell. Which brings me to Steve. I, I think you were kind enough, maybe, to, I, I hate to just sort of put you on the spot here, sure. uh, but to, to help us a little bit with some really awesome John Constantine stuff. Sure. Yeah. I was just looking at that. I'm like, I'm like, really, really, was it Emmy winning? Was it? <laughs> anything winning um, yeah i'm like i'm like he, he's kidding right so i was like looking. well the emmys are for television the grammys are, are for music i was just making a joke but yeah yeah, yeah. So i'm still not that funny i'm working but, on it yeah so 
Um, if you go to mybargaincomics.com, you know, I have a whole article on promo comics. I, I purposely excluded comics that are included in media inserts um, because I'm going to do a whole separate article with Topher on, on that. Um, so uh, I've had this sitting around since, since uh, June, and I was talking with Nico earlier. I'm like, it's time to open it up. And so, um, it, without further ado, should we just open it, or did you please, have please, and thank you, or did you have other books that you wanted? No, us to? we'll okay. go with that. This is exciting. Right, so, <laughs> drum roll, yeah. please. Yeah. yeah, where's my drum roll? <laughs> so let's see. This is the two disc. You really have to, you know, because there were so many different releases of DVDs and Blu-rays over time. You really have to be careful that you're getting the right one, and so I'll I'll, I'll hold this up. It's the two disc deluxe edition. Um, Getting out my list. Here it goes. Okay. I love that. Put me net. Piano on the cover, and oh, it's been so long since I purchased a DVD. I forgot how you actually take them out. I was like, <laughs> yeah. wow. So it slips out of the slipcase. And we've got the DVD, but behind it, we've got a a comic. Whoa, I mean, beautiful! Right. Okay. So this is um, I'm going to reference the back of the box. This is uh, a exclusive collectible Hellblazer comic featuring a reprint of issue 41, which was Dangerous Habits and a Hellblazer short story. Um, so I'll I'll open it up a little bit, and I bet so I can you know. grade this and maybe get a uh, maybe get a nine eight if I if I handle it if I handle it well. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Go. I have to admit I'm not familiar with issue forty one. I don't know why they picked. 41. It says the first appearance of the Fallen was 42. Um, Is that V for Vendetta on the back? Yeah. Yeah, there's a V for Vendetta ad on the back. Nice. Love that movie, too. So we'll, we'll put that in a... Um, this is... Oh, it's a Tim Bradstreet cover. I, I like Bradstreet. He's a, a good Amen. cover. We don't see enough of his stuff these days. Um, but, um, yeah, so... Uh, if you if you're a, a true fan of Constantine, this might be something you want to pick up. Uh, I can't tell you because it's been so long how much it cost me, but I don't I don't think it was a. I, I'm in El Cheapo. Carter and I are in the uh, El Cheapo club, so uh, mm -hmm. it, I, I can guarantee you it wasn't it wasn't more than fifty bucks. That's for sure. Probably a lot less. Good stuff, Steve. As yeah. always. Uh, you continue to educate me, and I appreciate it. All right, here's the next one. Holy sh! Nikes, uh, guys. ASM three sixty one CGC nine eight. It's a direct market, and it sells for more than a grand. The oh, fuck. I, I mean, I, I know they paid for the the pretty like uh, CGC uh, <laughs> like uh, headdress logo, whatever you call it. Fancy, yeah. label. fancy, yeah. fancy label, um, but I, I was just astonished at that price tag. Uh, we talked about this book last week or, or the week before, maybe when uh, it was hovering around eight hundred and change, uh, thinking that maybe um, you know as we got closer and closer to the film, uh, you know after maybe a trailer dropped, we we would see a thousand dollar price tag on this book. Um, that it did it in a, a matter of uh, seven to fourteen days. Uh, was shocking to me. And then uh, the same week, uh, an auction for a 9.6, $295. Uh, ben, you were just talking about the opportunities with 9.6s. Uh, when we talked a little bit about this auction before we went live, I mentioned that it made sense uh, for me anyway um, to buy three 9.6s and crack press and, and re-slab them, uh, but that under no circumstances did it make any sense to me uh, <laughs> to pay uh, that much for a 9.8 when there's that kind of disparity. Uh, what do you guys think? 
Yeah, I mean, my theory, uh, Nico, about nine eights for nine sixes are really limited to sort of rare print run books. Um, where there's this book by indirect is by no means rare, right? I mean, th this book um, was extremely well printed. Um, um, so I'm not a hundred percent sure that gap will close the same way for print runs like this versus books where I'm thinking sort of sub 2000 print runs, let's say roughly. Um, yeah, I mean, this strikes me as more of a mania than anything else for those nine eights. Um, you know, God bless those who are selling. I'm not sure I'd be a buyer um, at a thousand dollars for ASM 361 uh, direct in 9.8. We're talking about a newsstand. You know, maybe that's a different conversation. Um, even so, um, that's still a lot of money. Um, I'm not going to downplay the importance of Carnage. Certainly a a major Marvel character, um, but but this 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 is certainly shocking at, at, the, at those levels for, for me personally. Right now, can we think about this in relationship to this book, uh, which is a nine two newsstand with a Mark Jewelers insert? Now, uh, much like ASM three sixty one, New Mutants ninety eight has always been plentiful, right? I mean, they're nineties books. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, a Mark Jewelers I, I, is a Mark Jewelers newsstand is, is a different situation. Now, this is a nine two; it's not a nine eight, uh, but it, it does, in fact, check those rarity boxes that I think uh, guys like us and and sophisticated and, and shrewd collectors uh, really look for. Um, what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, the market wants scarcity currently, right? You're sort of putting ASM 365 direct aside for a thousand. Right now, collectors in the market want things that are are, are scarce, um, so they're going to pay up. So, so this doesn't actually seem that much of a stretch to me personally. I mean, it, you know, this book um, in nine six or nine eight in direct sells for big big bucks. So to find a Mark Jewelers in nine two. Um, and all the Mark Jewelers, I believe, are, are newsstands because they were sold in military bases predominantly. Right. Um, you know, this actually seems somewhat reasonable given where the current market is. So um, I get this. I mean, this, this book, I, this price makes a bit more sense to me than what we were talking about for, for the ASM Direct uh, in 9.8. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I, I think the price is totally justified uh, because... You know, I'm a niche collector. Uh, I, I like Mark Jewelers, but you know, I, um, I, I've been, I've come to be known as as Mr. DCU, and you know, I don't, I don't chase DCU so much as the scarcity as as just the the fun of it. Um, and you know, I just said a minute ago that I'm an El Cheapo, but when it comes to DCUs, if it's a like a two pack. Or, or something that I've, you know, there's still new ones being discovered. Um, I have definitely bid four figures and lost um, on on some DCUs. Um, so I know what it feels like, you know, to be a Mark Jewelers collector and want, you know, or to be a New Mutants 98 collector and want to have this to, you know, check that box um, because that's what you love. And you know you're you're really you know willing to pay almost any price for it, um, so yeah, I totally can see so uh, get in the mind of someone um, who's you know uh, who was the winning bidder for this. I mean, outside of maybe the Australian price variant, this is the rarest of all of Deadpool's first appearances. Arguably, there's no bigger modern character right now than Deadpool, so. I kind of get what's going on here. Like this, this does not shock me. Uh, so I'm very much with in Steve's camp. Hey, is there a 30th anniversary uh, Deadpool thing going on, or no? Do you know of? Yeah, it is. It is a 30th anniversary going on. Um, Diamond actually was advertising, and then. Uh, I guess it connects into the Savage Avengers 18, which comes out in a couple weeks. But yeah, there's 
something, some kind of, I wouldn't say event, but yeah, it's there. Mm -hmm. It's definitely there. I think Liefeld's doing like a gazillion different covers or something. And on a side, I was gonna say, they should do some Deadpool variants because there haven't been enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, could tell, I could tell you about Mark Jewelers. I, I mean, I've been collecting them for at least solidly for at least four years. And um, I don't know how many copies of New Mutants 98s there are. I, I'm sure there's a lot. But I mean, you know, like you said, they were for for um, a military men to buy jewelry for their for their loved ones or for themselves or what have you. And uh, basically what the numbers say based on my research is, is that um, Mark Jewelers from, I believe it's, well, let's just say 76, 77, let's just say uh, prime bronze age into the later mid to later copper age is, is r roughly estimated about Five percent of of the print run or the orders or whatever, however you want to word that, we'll say print run here, were Mark Jewelers. So which ones are in actually nine two condition? That's to be seen, and I don't see them very often. I mean, they were handled not very well. So this, I would pay this all day if I had the money. Now, Steve, uh, you had mentioned DCU variants, and we talked a little bit about uh, these uh, Kyle Rayner DCU variants. There's a, a ton of them. I won't um, kind of run through all of the images uh, unless you want me to, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about why this stuff's important? Right. Um, well, you know, Ron Mars um, picked up uh, Green Lantern. I think it was the, this issue um, and right away, the, the, the title, you know, changed in tone. I mean, right away, he turns, uh, you know, how, how Jordan, you know, to the uh, dark side, so to speak, uh, you know, who, um, uh, you know, wants to cre recreate uh, Coast City, which had been destroyed. Um, and uh, he'll do it at any cost. And he just goes on a, on a rampage. And that, that was a this issue, You're right? Um, yeah, it's a whole. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a whole arc. Um, you know, R Ron Mars just with issue forty-eight. You know, just started uh, running with it, and and by fifty-one, um, you have Kyle Rayner. Um, and I have I have some notes on this, but I, I'll I'll just do this uh, ad hoc. <laughs> Sorry. I, I can't find, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, by 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 fifty one, you have um, Kyle Rayner uh, on the cover uh, in costume. Um, so these, and, and by the way, there's the fifty one is one of the few DCUs. There's a second print. Um, the second print was included in the twenty pack. This first print was included in two packs of DCUs. Um, so uh so you've got some keys there uh you you've got and, and you you do have cameos because um kyle rayner does um appear as uh you know pre getting the ring um on the last panel of of one of the issues i can't remember offhand which one it was that's an iconic cover 49. that's a tom um, brady cover yeah, yeah. There you go. I never Great. thought of it that way, but that's I like that, Carter. I like that. Um, yeah, and this co cover has been, you know, homaged uh, uh, multiple times. Um, you know, so uh, the rarity in uh, among them is is different because some appeared in multiple two packs, some didn't. Um, but maybe at a future date, we can uh, go through these thoroughly. But uh, definitely, you know, pick up uh, – if you see them, pick them up. Some are more plentiful than the others. Uh, I'd say 48 through uh, 51, um, 52, 53, 54, you, and 55, you can skip. Oh, wait, wait. 54. 54 yeah. has the, um, ba -ba 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 -ba, the women, the, the, the girlfriend in the refrigerator. Okay, I thought that was 56. But um, – but if it's 54, it, then don't skip 54. Do what Carter said. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Because this this was um, uh, a milestone moment in, in comics. I don't think it was uh, immediate, 
Um, but years later, um, you know, this would become known as fridging because Kyle had a girlfriend, a major disaster, I believe, or is a major force, I can't remember, um, you know, kills her, puts her literally, her body literally in the refrigerator with that note. Um, and it was kind of like uh, a, a, a moment in, in, in comics looking back years later where female creators would look upon this as, you know, well, the female characters in comics are just fodder uh, for, uh, you know, for, the, for villains. They're, they don't really have their own, uh, I guess you would say, agency, right? Um, they're just plot devices to be killed and put in refrigerators. Well, the, wasn't that popularized in uh, Deadpool 2, uh, Once Upon a Deadpool? Fred Savage went on a rant about fridging uh, Veronica or whatever his girlfriend Tell me was. more about that. I don't know about that. Yeah, uh, you're, you're all over it, right? Yeah, this is 100% yeah, correct. And remember, this is uh, taught in college classes. Uh, it hasn't really gone off uh, you know, commercially. Like the comic itself doesn't, at least as we sit here today, demand a huge price. Yeah, it's dirt but, cheap. But everybody's aware of it. Um, the creators are aware of it. In fact, they're satirizing it in Marvel movies. Um, I mean, it's just, uh, I think it's one of those books, you know, 10 or 20 years from now, uh, people will look back and be like, why didn't I buy more copies of that book that has incredible historical significance? Um, it really, like I, I think you said, was uh, sort of like one of those um crystallizing uh, moments where uh, comics had more than uh, they had real historical like uh, impact um, for their errors right so anyway I I'm looking forward to hearing more about that from Steve as uh, we move forward there's your preview uh, <laughs> we'll have more later all right so Hasbro PulseCon uh, not a lot of news coming out of, of Hasbro PulseCon uh, as I sit here today, I, I must admit to not watching it, but I did catch that they're putting G.I. Joe characters in uh, Fortnite. Looks like Snake Eyes is going to be a playable Fortnite character. Um, I assume that the uh, people who are, are buying you know, $275 copies of uh, Mask One, a, a book you know, two years ago you could still find in dollar bins, um, maybe today you can still find in dollar bins. Dude, you can buy, you can put that money towards a sealed mask figure. What are you doing? Stop that. Cut that out. <laughs> Carter, you like, you like sealed mask figures? Yes, I'd rather buy that than the comics all day, every day. But I will say, I like this one here. I just found this in the, um, in the dollar bin. You have mask number eight. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm hold sorry. Hold on. I'm not real good. I'm not a good maestro. I was really impressed I'm at sorry. myself for being able to download a <laughs> handful of images. I'm messing with you right now. I'm sorry. But <laughs> th this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. So mass number eight has a nice little uh, swimsuit cover on it. And I'm no and I'm noticing this is uh seeing very brisk sales. Nice. So, so they really should buy the DC Comics aren't for kids anymore uh, message in that UPC box, right? Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, good stuff, guys. Uh, what do you think about the shared uh, universe for Hasbro, G.I. Joe, Transformers, Mask? I mean, is this uh, something you guys are interested in? I, I must say that um, the success of Star Wars has caused me to double down on uh, all of this stuff. Uh, Power Rangers books I'm buying now. Uh, we'll see what Carter did uh, here before the end of the show, so you can all resent him as much as I do. Um, mask, uh, buying them now. Uh, I've never in my entire life been focused on what G.I. Joe first appearances, variants, Transformers variants. I should be out picking up out of long boxes. Um, do you guys uh, sort of see things the same way as me? Is that something you're interested in um, that you think there's a future in? I, I know uh, Phil, for example, uh, has doubled down heavy on Power Rangers. And uh, Steve, you've mentioned, uh, at least recently to me, 
that that's a property that you're excited about i mean this i mean this shared universe right with mask rom micronauts gi joe i mean it's been rumored for what like four five six years or something yeah, yeah. i mean i mean everyone was just waiting for these studio heads to get their act together and present something of real substance for us to get excited um i'm a vintage toy dealer okay um i don't have any mass toys in stock right now i always do look out for them and like carter what like, yeah i mean if a, a sealed mask uh vehicle figure is 300 bucks that's a really good deal for a sealed vintage toy in the 80s that was loved by many people okay by many americans um i mean 275 is quite a lot i'm just not noticing that's a nine six and that makes it even worse right <laughs> i mean i'd pay a nine eight maybe yeah 300 in this bloated market era era right now but a nine six that is quite a lot um i wonder what the census is um but it, hey if they hit this out of the park Hey, you know, Micronauts was supposed to be the Star Wars, and then they just they messed it up, you know. So back in the day, so that yeah. was my thinking on these properties, right? They're all cool in their own right, but it comes down to execution on the big screen. If they fuck them up, um, I'm not sure they're necessarily going to go anywhere. There's a huge, massive potential. Like nobody on this can argue with that. Um, but it comes down to the studio's execution on the properties, right? Do they take them seriously? Can they present them in a way that that, that comes off in a way that, you know, viewers are going to like them? So I, I think there's a big opportunity, but there's also a huge opportunity for a miss, right? G.I. Joe hasn't exactly been pulled off well on the big screen yet, right? And it seems like a property that should be able to be pulled off in a good way, and we just haven't seen it yet. It's not to say it's not coming, and it should be coming, but we'll have to wait and see on on how they execute on this. Yeah, it's kind of that's a great point, Ben. Um, I, I it reminds me of I, I know we're going to look next. Maybe maybe this is a good uh, as they used to say back in the UD days, a good segu um, to the next book, um, which uh, I, I think is is Hellboy, right? I mean, so like the Hellboy movie was not um uh, a smash by any means and i think we're seeing that um you know i think i've had a hel couple hellboy issues listed and you know i can't give them away so um you know there there is a question out there you know what you know when is the next head of steam going to come for hellboy is it going to take you know years for people to you know forget the the, the most recent movie um you know, so um, I love Hellboy. I didn't even yeah. uh, dislike the most recent film. It was uh, critically panned. Um, I'm excited about GI Joe. I mean, they're talking uh, The Rock, Tom Holland, but Lord knows that uh, with other major actors um, starring in, in prior films that, by all accounts, didn't deliver. Uh, we didn't see a lot of action on those books. That doesn't mean that there's not a rabid fan base. It doesn't mean that the landscape isn't completely different today than it was even a year ago, certainly you know, two, four, six years ago. Um, it, it's all quite fascinating uh, for me. Uh, for my money, uh, I'd rather have uh, an X-Men 2198 than a uh, Mask 198. Uh, and I was shocked um, that these books were, were essentially selling for the, the same price tag, um, but not to get too complicated for people, um, you know, that $275, $85 mark, we see this book shooting up overnight, uh, $560 for uh, Star Wars Episode One, The Phantom Menace, number three, the Darth Maul cover is beautiful, but, uh, you know, my God, six months ago, a year ago, did you ever anticipate that this would be a five hundred and sixty dollar nine eight, guys? Uh, Phil, I, I know you, for example, um, have 
when I say championed and uh, bought into Star Wars more so than perhaps anyone I know, that's not an understatement. Um, and I think that it really is a testament to just how good The Mandalorian uh, season one and season two were and just how much faith people have in Marvel properties compared to other properties. Absolutely, George. I mean, spot on. You know, there's another angle I want to take on this. And you see this a lot with Star Wars covers, and it's yet to take off um, with Marvel covers. But these covers that are um, drawn in the likeness of the actors, I think there's huge, huge potential for on the Marvel side. We see this on Star Wars, and, you know, this cover in particular, right? Massive, massive price appreciation. I think one of the biggest layups in the market today, and I get pushback on this every day, which makes me think I'm right uh, more so than wrong, is any cover from, from an MCU property. And I've got, you know, I've got all sorts of them, but um, I, I think, you know, uh, what did I do with it? You know, this one in particular, but there's lots of them that are kind of sort of of this ilk. Hold on, buddy. This is Wanda's, um, you know, this Ultron Forever series had a bunch of uh, covers where they had sort of, sort of very sort of um, photorealistic, realistic representations of the characters from MCU. Um, I th these are all one in 25s, and they're not that expensive in today's markets. I think there's a huge opportunity for them. Um, and there's lots of them. We could go. We could go all night long on them in, in general. Most people push back and say they don't like them. But what I see in Star Wars is that these books command huge premiums, um, and I think this is coming to MCU. I think a lot of the people who sort of realize what the MCU was from a cultural phenomenon, who were introduced to it before the comics, are going to seek out these photo type covers uh, in the future. And I would be chasing them right now as quickly as you can, because I think they're going to be massive in the next five to 10 years as, as people who grew up from the MCU start to embrace them. So for books that I'm chasing right now, anything sort of in that ilk, you know, at the forefront of what I'm seeking out. But anyway, it's just my two cents. I didn't mean to go completely off script there, but when you show yeah, that. It's, it's good see. stuff. And it reminds me of uh, one of the books Steve was talking about a week or two ago was a uh, Chris Evans, uh, Captain America cover. I believe from that same run, right, Steve? Uh, was that was that me? No, that, that that was a book that I had recommended. Yeah, I think Steve yeah. liked it, but oh, it was a book that Steve I liked it too. From the same run, uh, a very good picture of Cap going after some Ultron robots from from from, from definitely from the same run. Um, it didn't make our top ten list. It, I think it just fell short. Um, but I think that's you know a great book. I mean that is sort of representation of Chris Evans in that character that we don't see in many other covers. There's a few other ones that have been done. Um, but, you know, I'll, let me share one in particular. Yeah, I was it. thinking of the... Well, the wrap -up wrap -up. But this book right here is one of... I, 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 I was chasing this book forever, right? So, Avenger Solo, they had 1 in 15 variants for all of their... all of these books, but they were massively underordered to the tune of less than 15,000 a piece. So a one in 15 on a book that was ordered less than 15,000 copies, good luck finding it because most stories weren't ordering 15. Um, so this one is is stunning, but there's a Captain America, there's a Thor, there's an Iron Man, there's a there's a Nick, uh, Nick Fury, um, and uh, um, he's got there's a few other characters in that one, but you know these fall into that camp, books that I absolutely love um that are really 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 difficult to find now there's no real appearances inside that matter but the covers themselves are just absolutely stunning uh, i i think people are going to start chasing these as time goes on i i i really 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 do um so I, i've been grabbing them when i see them um but but some of them are are ghosts or are modern are modern ghosts i would say hold on i've got one this one right i talk about right now this this is out there for nothing, not nothing, but it, it's a one in twenty five uh, Black Widow Sting. Um, this book was a pandemic book, right? So the, the orders were less than twenty thousand on it 
at one in twenty-five. The cover was done in Scarlett Johansson's uh, likeness. Um, there is some appearances in here. I know Rich, Rich is aware are, are aware of them. We talked about it, um, but I think this is a good pickup for ten bucks. You can find it for ten bucks for a one wow. in twenty-five on a book that had a, a, a you know orders of less than twenty thousand. There's not a lot of them out there, but something worth grabbing. I think all of these MCU likeness books are going to have. Um, are going to have demand in the future. So I would grab them while nobody's talking about them. And Ben's been telling me about these books in our private conversation at least six months now, at least, you know, four to six months at least. Yeah, and I mean, I like the Hiddleston. I think it's um, that uh, Journey into Mystery 622 second print. Uh, that's the first appearance of Eichel. It was on our, our list uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, the photo uh, cover. I like the photo cover. That's yeah. a great cover. I, I have great two cover. of those now. They're not easy to find, but a great book. I agree, George. That's a home run. All right, so let's talk about what everybody's talking about uh, when it comes to Marvel Comics. WandaVision. <laughs> <laughs> Give me more, baby. Give me more. <laughs> What'd you guys think? I love it, man. I think it's fantastic. I mean, the show is, you know, there was some criticism early on that it was sort of too slow paced, but, you know, you got to think about this as sort of a five to six hour movie. So give it some time. To build, right. Give it some time to build. But the last episode, I think, delivered and it's finally sort of taken us where we want to go with this story. But what does uh, our spiritual brother Mel say? Let the beat build. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and they did. I mean, you, you know, I, I think everyone here, you know, knows, you know, I was I was kind of meh on the first uh, episode or two. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they really played it, um, you know, pr pretty straight, you know, as, as far as, uh, you know, I, I thought there'd be more sort of uh, shenanigans. And um, and then, you know, the, the third was like, Oh, th this this is getting good. And then this week's episode was, you know, they opened the mystery box, and now I'm, I'm I'm fully on board, you know, and uh, and and just just loving it. It's so funny. My internal clock wakes me up at around three o'clock <laughs> <laughs> when that when those when those episodes drop. Uh, Carter, you're not alone, my friend. I work productivity, I think, across the United States uh, has been down on Fridays. I am uh, up at three. Why? Well, it's not even true. Two fifty-five a.m. Uh, wait, <laughs> I got five minutes to get my like act together, and uh, ding, I'll watch it for an hour. Try to go back to sleep if I can. Uh, smile on my face all day long, Friday. Exactly. Uh, I'm really I'll, I'll tell you what, man. Like that last episode, right? So we've got two actresses in this in this show who are lights out. So, so I, I forget her name. Whoever's playing Monica Rambeau, I thought she was awesome in the last episode, and then um, and then Wanda, she wasn't in it much, but when she sort of goes full Wanda and sends Monica out of you know Westview, God, I thought that was brilliant, man. Like you know some really really good performances from these from these two women um and can't wait for the next episodes it's it's really good stuff i yeah, thought uh cat demings was just fantastic yeah. great I, point. I had, he was I had awesome. forgotten about her and i'm like who's this new character and then you know i read some online articles i'm like oh okay she's actually appeared before but the last time we saw her was what 10 years ago yeah, I think it was Thor. Thor, Dark Thor, Thor, Thor right? Two, uh, two, I think. Oh, yeah. okay, all right. Yeah, but I yeah, thought she was yeah, you're 100, Steve. She yeah. was also really, really she good. Stole the show. Yeah, I thought she stole the episode. Uh, Definitely, no doubt. on the eyes too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. All right. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and it's interesting because um, I, I'll be paying close attention to what her comic appearance does. I mean, Jimmy Choo, uh, it, you know, the golden claw golden age book. I, I don't think that's going to uh, go up or down um, based on his appearance, but you know, non superhero characters have not uh, gotten a lot of love from um, the uh, collectibles market 
Um, I, I wonder if this format may uh, change people's opinions about that. Uh, I wonder if Disney Plus will be received uh, in a different way as like, you know, than, uh, for example, S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, right. was perceived. Um, something to think about. I think it will be perceived differently, um, Nico. Uh, I think it already is. Like, S.H.I.E.L.D. was supposed to be, but then it wasn't. The whole thing kind of came undone. I mean, from what I can tell from everyone in the community, they're bought into this as part of MCU, and I think it's going to be super strong. I also think it's good for spec. It changes the game, right? We were specking on comics, and the movie hit. Like, once the movie hit, it was done. That book was done, whatever you were specking on. The build here, I think draws it out a little bit i think it's better for perspective Does comics favra have a photorealistic comic cover hmm i don't know movies say that again he's been in a lot of movies so been in a lot of movies i'm gonna have to find out the answer to that because if he does that's a book i'm gonna have to buy <laughs> uh he is the uh <laughs> modern marvel uh heavyweight champ and uh, yeah, i don't know it's a good one I don't, yeah, know. I, I don't know the answer to that one either but i'm gonna figure out uh that answer as soon as we get off the air and um i apologize if i buy all the copies on ebay i, so, I, was, I okay I believe, not that sorry. um uh john favreau he wrote um like uh, it was like it was supposed to be a mini series but i think it only lasted for two issues it was uh Iron Man Las Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, back in like 08 or 09 or something like that. Yeah. How cool would a CGC Signature Series book uh, with Favre? Right. Be. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I was digging the other day, and I found that second print of that Iron Man Las Vegas book. Oh, snap. So, yeah. Nice, uh, nice, I, nice, nice. Yeah, I was pretty happy to dig that one up, but... Um, uh, came out of nowhere. I'm like, oh shit! I'll take that for a buck. Why not? Good stuff. Uh, so, guys, where do you see uh, Wanda going forward? Well, the question is, right? Is is she the villain in all this, or is there something else going on? Right? Is she the one creating all this? That's kind of what they implied. So, can you believe that? Who knows? Uh, but. Are we going spoiler free here? Are we trying to do this spoiler free? I, I would think anybody that watches this podcast has given up on ideas of spoilers a long fucking time ago. Yeah, what do you think? yeah. So I think that's a great question. And I'll give them something to complain about in the comments if if they just okay. <laughs> yeah, spoiler <laughs> alert. If you haven't seen the episode, turn it off now. Three, two, one. Okay, you're too late. Um, so when Monica Rambeau gets shot out. She's in, and she's you know on the grass and the FBI and 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 she and everybody surrounding her. She's in a complete daze, in a complete daze. I mean, she still thinks she's in the script. She just doesn't realize what's happening. And finally, when she comes to it, it's she mentions it's all Wanda. It's all Wanda, meaning that Wanda is doing this whole thing. Remember, um, they were trying to communicate with her on the radio, asking Wanda, you know, who is doing this to you? Remember that? Well, sh she's answering the question. Now, doesn't mean that it is all Wanda because she's still in that daze. She's still in that script. So it could be somebody controlling Wanda, which we will see probably in the next episodes. And I'm very eager to see it. So like Vision, like in I think episode one is like he's trying to find out what he's doing at his job, and they just keep telling him, yeah, we just we're just processing, the, you right. know, like some type of mathematical formula or whatever it is. So that leads me to think that yeah, possibly there could be a another like a villain. I don't know how Mephisto or the, the Grim Reaper comes well, into play here. Let me ask you this, guys. The Television that uh, Kat Dennings' uh, character, shame on me for forgetting the character's name. Darcy. Uh, Darcy. Darcy. Yeah, thank Darcy. you. Yeah, so the, the television show that Darcy's watching is edited. Is it safe to presume that it doesn't have fucking Hydra commercials? Because if it did... Uh, no, no, so, so the Hydra commercial, I watched this a couple times today, that did show up 
for she didn't they didn't comment on it, but that did show up as they were watching it. They, so that was there. Um, well, how do they not pick up on that? Do yeah, I sound like I, a guy who's like uh, trying to make TV a little too fucking real? Uh, I don't know if they tuned out or what, but it definitely that they definitely showed a clip of the commercial at the point where they weren't paying attention to it. She was talking to somebody else, whether it was Jimmy Chu or whoever, but she was talking to somebody else when that commercial segment came on. Um, so they're they're there, it appears. Um, but they haven't acknowledged that stuff yet. Yeah, you would think that that would that would jump right out at them, right? What the fuck? Yeah. The Hydra watch, like. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so the actor that is playing uh, Monica Rambeau, what's her name? I think it's Tanya Par- Paris, Tiana Paris. Well done, uh, sir. And excuse me if I'm saying that wrong, but this is what I thought was really interesting, which really got it kicked off when. And I was right there with Steve. Me and Steve even discussed it. I was not really impressed with the first two episodes at the beginning. The third one got me going a little bit, but I was still kind of like, eh. This one got me going, especially at the beginning when we saw people getting snapped back. Yes. And that time gap was not was not a reality to Monica Rambeau. And that was big for me. When when he when the when she went when Monica Rambeau went and asked about her mom. I apparently, I guess her mom was uh, in surgery for cancer or was cancer free, what have you. And they, and they said, no, your mom passed away. She said, that's impossible. Uh, something about like, it's only been 20 minutes. I fell asleep or something like that. They said, no, she has, she passed away from cancer three years ago. So I thought that was interesting. Cause it's I, I, at least, I don't remember anybody being snapped back and going, into that three four year gap timeline do you guys i mean i don't know i I love that opening scene yeah and and rich you and i I talked about that and um yeah i mean that that, i mean that had us hooked and you know that that was maybe the turning point for for both of us to get on board the wandavision train um but originally i was like really excited for nika because i didn't realize what was happening within the first like 30 seconds a minute when I saw those blocks, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. That's like the House of M, you know, cover and everything. Um, so, you know, I'm like, I'm like, holy shit, they're, they're, they're like, that's happening. But, you know, I, it didn't instantly occur to me that it was, you know, that was people blipping back. Um, blipping back, yeah. Yeah. So, Nico, I got really excited for you. Maybe maybe we'll still see something. Well, I, I just don't know exactly what we're going to see. Um, I mean... Elizabeth Olsen uh, is interviewed, I mean, forever ago about this project. She's holding House of uh, M issues number one and issue number seven. <laughs> I mean, uh, like, I, she didn't do that for no reason. Um, the question, I think, uh, is, is it a brief kind of uh, inspirational illusion to uh, Wanda Maximoff uh, having this uh, mental breakdown and creating this uh, faux reality uh, in the same way that she did, you know, uh, again, like uh, thematically in House of M, or is it going to have real, you know, consistent uh, overarching plot, uh, you know, elements, although modified, but you know, major plot elements, much like House of M. Uh, are we going to get what I hope we get, which is House of M in, in reverse, that we occupy the reality uh, where she's already said no more mutants. And then Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness becomes, uh, you know, the, the strange and company versus evil Wanda trying to get her to reverse what she said and, and come back after she's been influenced by, uh, manipulated by, controlled by uh, Mephisto, uh, you know, so that she can have Wiccan and speed. And then it sets us up on a course for young Avengers. I don't know. Sounds nice when I talk about it like that. Uh, but <laughs> will we actually get it? You guys tell me. You know, uh, it's much funny you brought up speed. Uh, just a side note: the Young Avengers ten, by the way, is on fire right now. I, I had one listed and uh, a nine six, and I, I, because of what I saw in WandaVision, I 
you know, hiked it up a little bit. Man, I've been getting offers like crazy on it. I had to pull it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and they say like uh, the cosmic energy is expanding and getting bigger and bigger. So where is that going to lead with Wanda, you know? So it has me really, really curious. And then also the uh, we saw the uh, the dead zombified white vision. So I guess West Coast Avengers 45 is really in play right now. I saw a couple of nine eights that, that went off for record prices this past week. So, I mean, I just picked up an ugly copy of one I pulled out of a back issue bin. Um, it'll be my first and uh, perhaps my only copy of that book ever. <laughs> yeah, there's a vision number two, uh, Dale Keown variant with um, the white version of a vision. Um, I believe it's number two, hmm. yeah. If, if you have, have them, I'd uh. I, I would say sell them quick because it, you know, yeah. I'll forever remember the, uh, you know, the cap lifting uh, Thor's hammer and and how quickly that came and went. Oh my gosh! Oh my, got rid of a lot of copies of that book though. I was very excited. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What tell me? Uh, tell me what you're you're doing down there. You've got some uh, some real serious. Uh, Back for our, our friends and, and listeners, um, Phil, educate the public. We got Matt DeVoe dancing here, really quickly. Woo. Oh, okay. <laughs> the cover price. All right, all right. He said he modeled for the cover just in our nice. chat. So, nice. but uh, here, so uh, Jason Shaw from Connecting the Dots, his article sometimes gets um, overlooked, and he wrote about this book, um, Astonishing X Men. Uh, number 10. Yeah, Jason's a beast on Comic Book Invest. Uh, if you're not reading him, you're doing yourself a disservice. He's sharp as they come. Very uh, good. This guy's old school. This guy uh, grew up in the Bronze Age and Copper Age, so he knows his comics. I know we have an, a lot of older... Well, no, I wouldn't say you guys are old, but <laughs> um, we have we have viewers that are from probably 50 that are in their 50s to 60, 70 years old, 80 years old, right? So um, he knows his stuff. He says that this is the first full appearance of the S.W.O.R.D. team. We don't see Abigail Brand, but we do see the S.W.O.R.D. team. So this is going for about three to five bucks on hmm. eBay right now. There's a bunch. There's also a, a, li a limited gold edition. Um that was spread um it was half this cover this white cover and half that other cover of professor x so uh go get it um we see how astonishing x-men three and i think it's six that are really really shot up big time yeah. uh, this also has several uh first appearances of some agents one uh, notably that jason said is uh sidron is in like an alien agent, and there is an agent that d disappears in Westview. So maybe one of the agents is in this book, and if we see more of that, Jason was telling me in a private convo. So definitely a good play. I mean, no, considering how cheap it is, that's the gold cover. Yeah. And uh, I, I've got to admit, I've been looking at a ton of X Men variants recently. And yeah. have uh, seen a whopping zero copies of that particular variant, which is uh, super duper cool just for the Xavier cover alone. They uh, seem a little bit harder to find. Um, you can find them right now. Um, they're a little bit harder to find um, in the population online. But uh, according to Comicron, it was supposed, it was supposed to be a split on the print run. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, I gotta. I'm gonna dig deeper. I like it, guys. Uh, Carter, you see that book in the wild? I. You know what? I see I the white one. I believe I've seen that book. You know what I mean? It's like probably, but I, it's just it's something that I've never paid attention to. Yeah, I mean, I can't say that I've been uh, looking for the. Uh, 
the red background the mm -hmm. cover per se. Uh, but I've been looking at a lot of freaking X Men books lately. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> don't know. Uh, super insightful stuff, though, guys. I, I really uh, appreciate it. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about, uh, we've got some insider uh, info to share with you. Um, and, and basically, it comes uh, straight from uh, the man, the myth, the, whoops, sorry, uh, Phil, Lord knows. Well, he's, a, he's a legend, too. He is yeah, a legend. <laughs> Bill is a legend. That's true. But this one's uh, all Steve Horn. Uh, Steve, before we start, uh, I want to give a, a shout out to our friends at uh, Hive Comics who are doing a, a uh, free giveaway uh, in conjunction with uh, the channel for um, a copy of the uh, retailer variant for uh, Berserker number one. The information will be forthcoming. Uh, but if you're not shopping with James and Jonathan, I think you guys are doing yourself a disservice. There's also uh, a giveaway running on Comic Book Invest uh, right now uh, as we speak. Um, you know, Phil and myself both uh, write for that website, as does uh, Jason, who is responsible for the last spec tip. Now, uh, Steve, you, uh, you got an early copy? Yeah, so I, I thought well, bef before I uh, actually talk about about, about the book, um, it, it may be interesting to uh, folks may be like, you know, how do you get to read this? You know, uh, a month or two, or you know, sometimes uh, it, you know it's even th three months before it comes out. Um, so you know, I, I I I have a Diamond account. I order from Diamond um, every month, and um, I know this wasn't always the way uh, previews were, were done, um, but it, it's the way uh, nearly all of them are, are, are currently done, which is, um, and, and that it would be of interest to our, to our, to our listeners, is um, that it's done digitally. So I'll get an email from Diamond um, or from Image through Diamond or from Boom through Diamond um you know a lot of times on a weekly basis and they'll have within the email click this link to go here to download a pdf and you and sometimes it's on dropbox sometimes it's on uh something else uh so uh you know i can download those uh copy them over to my google drive and then just read them on my ipad or on my uh, computer screen. Uh, a, a lot of times they'll be uh, watermarked, um, so it's definitely not in any retailer's uh, best interest to share them with anyone except themselves, um, because they, in, in in most cases, they can they can track you down and and find out uh, who you are. It may have your even your diamond account number. Sometimes it makes things challenging to read. It'll cover up a caption box or a word balloon, um, but um, you know, but uh, but it's helpful. Um, in other cases, uh, it'll be like for Marvel. Uh, you actually go into the Diamond website and the listing for the book, and there's a link. Uh, within the diamond ordering system and you can download a preview for there from there nice um, again it's a it's a pdf um and um yeah so sometimes they don't give uh, you know much much time like I, I think marvel dropped three previews on thursday and i think they were for books that foc on monday so sometimes it's there's a long lead time and sometimes there's not. So just wanted to give uh, you know our, our listeners um, some insight into that process in case they were wondering. Anyhow, I did get an email from Boom. I think it was on Friday about uh, the new Keanu Reeves uh, book uh, Berserker uh, without any vowels. I can't pronounce it without any vowels, so I'll, I'll call it Berserker. Um, and I was excited to read it because there'd been so much press and uh, we'll, we'll say hype about it. 
And um, I came in honestly with with low expectations. I think some of the some of the fellows here and and uh, who are on on this show and and the top ten can can tell you, um, you know, I, I can be a hard guy to to please in in terms of um, uh, books and, and and whether I like them. Um, so I came in with with low expectations. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a celebrity book and. Um, you know, and uh, but I, I did I did read it, and I don't want to spoil anything. But um, at least from my perspective, I found it to be an enjoyable read. Um, it was very violent, ultra violent. Um, you know, there's you know body parts being pulled out of the body and and, and things like that. Um, but. Uh, uh, it, it was like so over the top. I was I, I found myself smirking while I was reading it, but it it wasn't so over the top that I'm like you know th this is BS. Um, so um, and it, it and it wasn't a, a lot. Of, a lot of the story was you know those action uh, violent action scenes, but um, there there was um, some more interest. What I'll say introspective. Uh, parts to it and, uh, and 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 thoughtful and I am actually looking forward to um, to, to reading the the next issue. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so um, now, am I going to go out and get the uh, you know one in one thousand uh, Keanu Reeves sign one or I know Phil posted for the group there's like some twenty six hundred dollar package where you get like all the variants and the sign you know and the sign one and you know you know did i love it that much uh no i probably will just order you know one copy uh for myself um be, because you know I, you know this is going to be a heavily ordered book it might be the i don't know it's, it's early in 2021 to say it might be the uh the biggest ordering book, but maybe the biggest book so far this year in terms of uh, number of copies. Um, so, so at least from my perspective, and you know, obviously not everyone's going <laughs> to agree with it. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'd encourage people to take a look. It's it's, it's it doesn't come off as like some celebrity uh, vanity project. It 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 actually has. Um, you know, it's actually a interesting and fun read. Can't wait. Anyone else disappointed that none of these retailers had the foresight uh, to make a clerks? Would you like to yep. make some? Well, fun do we know? Do we know that? Yet? I don't. Know <laughs> seen, I don't know if we've seen the store variants yet, right? I'm just saying, if not, if no <laughs> one did it for me. I, I'm I'm gonna be heartbroken all of the days of my life. Uh, Hive, if you're listening, uh, you know, give the people what they want. Do you like to make it? <laughs> Do you think Keanu Reeves sings that song to himself all day long as a result of this project? And if not, why not? I don't know. But <laughs> I know for a thousand dollars, you should not only get the Keanu Reeves signature, you should get the Alex Winter signature so that you have both Bill and Ted's signature on the cover. Yeah. You all right? Uh, all right. I freaking love it. I freaking love it. Um, good stuff, as always. Uh, now for uh, the moment you've all been waiting for. Carter. Pickups. Or Carter should go last, probably, huh? There's Maybe no go question first. about it. I mean, I'll let you go first yeah. and fire everybody up. It's important for him to embarrass all of us at the end. <laughs> yeah, he should go last. All I right. think so. Yeah. Well, uh, what I'm going to do then is uh, I'm going to move his ass uh, right here. Put you in last place. Steve, can we start with you? Absolutely. Um, kind soul. So I know it's been a couple of weeks of, of uh, 
since doing pickups. So um, I'm only going to do what I, what I picked up today. I, I'll add one or two more in there. But um, today um, I came across an opportunity to buy a former newsstand dealer. Um, uh, there, uh, a, a, well, I won't, I won't say a collection, but stock. Um, so, uh, this was, uh, on the front porch of someone who wasn't home, but I was communicating with them via text. And, um, uh, so my fingers were freezing off, uh, going through these, but, um, uh, you know, I worked a deal where I could just, you know, take a box. I didn't take everything because the last thing I need is more Drek. And some of these might be Drekky books, but um, I did I did some homework on some of them, and some of them I just were like, okay, if it's a if it's an Amazing Spider-Man newsstand, you're you're silly, you know, not to pick it up, right? Uh, with the JMS run, um, absolutely, right. And, and I mean, and and there were like multiple copies. I mean, it was it, it was ridiculous. We were talking about um, Astonishing X-Men. Uh, multiple copies of both 10 and 11. I forget if they have any significance. I, I did take a flyer on, on some of these. Uh, some of them were just uh, cover art. So you can't go wrong with Jock doing the Joker. I mean, this isn't Detective 880, right? But still, it's She's still gorgeous. Pink Joker background. and Jock and Newsstand. That's brilliant. Uh, equals winner. What else equals winner? And believe me, I'm not even showing all the copies. These are just the ones I bagged and boarded so far. Is Jock doing uh, Batman and the and the Red Hood newsstand? That's awesome. Um, wow. Let's see. Uh, for some reason, okay, there was one copy of this, and th and this made it a winner. Just this alone, right? Oh, hell yeah. Batman Beyond, Return of the Joker, Newsstand. Uh, I, I, I wish there were more. You got Carter clapping. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's a hot do. one. I like that. That's not easy to do. Um, I was I was disappointed because um, there were some issues surrounding the the Winter Soldier keys, but not the actual keys themselves. So there's Captain America Seven, which is. Um, uh, Right, I think six is right the big one, right? But then you've got the Winter Soldier Part One, eight, a couple copies of that. Um, got a cap fucking six. Wait, no, that's a new stand? Yeah, it yeah, is. yeah, yeah, they're all they newsstands. New stands. Everything I picked up wow. is a newsstand. Um, this, this guy's not in Missouri, is he? What's that? Is he in Missouri? No, this is this is Maryland. This is. Oh, wow. um, dude, that's gorgeous. yeah. This is um, eleven, and from what I understand from Mister Long Short, this is uh, the origin issue. Um, let's see. Yeah. Now, this is kind of cool. I think it would have been cooler maybe five years ago, um, but still, multiple, multiple copies of this. Harley Quinn. Mm -hmm. um, what is it? Number, I think sixteen or fifteen. Wow. Um, it's 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 a nice cover. I don't know how the um, that Harley Quinn's doing these days. I haven't had time to check. It's still desirable. I'm still selling yeah. books. Yeah. yeah, I'd hold on to that. Just wait till the Suicide Squad movie goes bonkers and everybody's like, Margot Robbie is the greatest Harley Quinn ever. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, the trailer just dropped just the other day. For what? For the new Suicide Squad. The trailer oh, just dropped cool. for Warner Brothers. All the Warner Brothers. Uh, I don't know. I was watching um, that show or movie on HBO Max that just dropped with Denzel Washington. Oh! And before yeah. that, they That's had cool. a, they had a trailer of the. I guess they have a, a promotion going for you know everybody that's stuck at home. Anything right. that's dropping in a theater it, it, domestically in the U.S. is going to drop on HBO Max the same exact time. And one of them was Suicide Squad too. Right, <laughs> it looked cool. pretty cool. I want to check that new trailer out. Yeah. Now this, I believe, is a key, right? Th this is the Illuminati, right? Oh, yeah. oh that's nice. everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Only oh, one copy. 
Only so one that, copy of it. I, I was rooting for that not to happen until now. Uh, bring on the fucking Illuminati. <laughs> oh, only one co- it figures. Only one copy of that. But meanwhile, there were like 10 copies. You're, you're, getting me, uh, you're, getting me all, you're getting me all excited. I would copies. rather have that newsstand of number seven than, than the Neil Adams cover. Absolutely. Right. My temperature rising. <laughs> this is just a nice Finch cover, you know? And it's uh, a new stand. Uh, Ronan. It's a second Ronin, right? Second. Oh, is it really? Ronin. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, My temperature's rising. Get it, Steve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, only one Star Wars book and only one copy. Not sure why. Um, for what it's right. worth. Yeah. Stand. Sure. Why not? Um, I Star Wars Wall Street, I think. There was only one copy of this, and probably I would have only taken one anyway. But this is a uh, a Jim Lee uh, Superman Joker cover. Can't beat it. Now this I did get multiple copies of. Um, oh yeah, Psylocke, right. I mean, I don't know. I forget if there's any significance. That's or if a it's, division issue. Where they divide. Uh I can't remember. I know. I know one of the Psylocke covers in the four hundred and fifty to five hundred range heated up in the past year, and I can't remember which one. Um, and, it, and it was you know driven by House of X. I love that cover. Yeah. So a couple copies of that. For some reason, there was just one copy of this one. Dude, tell me you got a dupe. No, I'm sorry. Um, mm. I wish I did. Um, a bunch of what I need to have happen. So there were a ton of copies of the Extreme X Men newsstands. Yeah. What I need to have happen, and I, I think it was Deadpool a couple years ago. There was a rumor that Red Locust was going to show up. Wow! And so I, I got a bunch of copies. Nice of uh, of Extreme X Men Five. That was hot for uh, a minute a couple years ago. So. Um, Usually stuff comes back eventually. No um, doubt about it. I got this, and f- from what I understand, it's pretty scarce. It's uh, Killer Instinct, um, wow. number one from McLean Comic. Yeah, newsstand. Wow. Yeah. Well, actually, you know, you know what? This is a direct sales. I just, I, huh. um, but still, I, I think it's all around rare. Uh, video game comic, right? Yeah, it's a freaking awesome book. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, there were a couple directs mixed in. I I don't know why. You know what's funny is um with the Extreme X-Men, even the uh those weird 2001 X-Men annuals, <laughs> there's the newsstand edition. Did the seller know they were newsstands, Steve? No, he didn't he didn't know uh I don't think anything. Um, I wonder where, where like, he, I mean, because if he's not knowing, I wonder where he's getting these books. I think like, they, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he had bought them from a, a former newsstand vendor. Wow. I even saw one of the boxes from Quebec. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that and took sense. some pictures and, and, and things. Now, this was the one that was killing me. The, there were, I don't know how many copies that I, I don't know if I left any. I think I still took them, but. I, there were probably 20 copies of this. Wow. But only this issue of Young Avengers. Wow. Um, which, you know, is in between the keys. You just wonder if you're sitting on those books. I mean, they never come to market. Yeah. Right? Like, right. newsstands of that Young Avengers series never come to right. market. I Where know. are they? I know where where is where's the nine where's the seven where's the where's the one but it figures I I mean I who am I to complain I mean I I got it I got a nice deal um you saw the return of the Joker you saw the new Avengers seven I can t- I can tell you this Steve so um as you guys know I'm I'm really into modern newsstands too so when and what I'm noticing at least for me the people that come back to me is is that when I have a newsstand key, a modern key, so I'll give you an example. This actually did happen. Was um, so in the entire series Black Panther, um, Dark Rain Run. Okay, one through I think it's twelve, right? 
and there's a second print. I have all those in newsstands, and I had doubles, and then I had triples of a few of them. Long story short, I sold five and labeled the other ones, you know, just as they were, didn't label, you know, Shuri's Black Panther, just the titles or whatever. And I, I raised them for a premium and people were just giving me offers. So once, right. so my point is, is that once five popped and one popped the right. newsstand, or whatever they were, people were coming to me going, you know, giving me offers on all the other ones. And, you know, I cleared them out. So yeah, I mean, sure. you, buyers of rare modern books go oh, yeah. bonkers, bonkers over these newsstands. Um, yeah, and in, in the past month, I I um, put up for sale. This is one I I bought over the the newsstand. It was the last Batman Fifty Two, the last issue of the New Fifty Two run. Oh wow! I, okay. I think I picked it up at Books a Million and was like, um, this could be interesting one day. And so, you know, now fast forward, you know, five years later, I put it up for sale, like 99 or best offer. Someone gave me like a $50 offer and I was like, yeah, that's good. I'll take it. So, yeah, there, there's definitely buyers for. Uh, you said newsstand. you had 20 copies of Young Avengers 2 newsstand? No, uh, eight. The, the, this oh, one. Eight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this, Steve. We talked a little bit about this before it. Do you perceive uh, less interest in uh, late market DC than Marvel, or is that just uh, me? No, because I know I have like currently listed. Uh, if you go to my eBay store, like a a Batwoman um, newsstand lot, I also have a Nightwing newsstand lot. Not seeing a whole lot of interest. Now, in fairness, I know for over a year I've had listed. Um, Avengers um, Secret Invasion issues, uh, newsstands, uh, and and um, those um, um, are uh, are um, homage the um, some other covers like the the Vision uh, first Vision cover, right? One of them got snapped up at a decent price, but the other two have just been sitting for like a year and a half. Hmm. So, I guess it just depends, you know. Sure. You know. So if that's Young Avengers eight, right? Yeah. So first stature is what Young Avengers six, right? I think so. Yeah. I think there's a newsstand for that book because I, that has been on my yeah. newsstand list. I have never seen one ever. Yeah. I've because if you look, at, if you look at these books, I mean, this is a 2001 annual, right? Okay. And um, some other dates that we can, you know, go by. Okay, this Harley Quinn is 2002. And uh, when was Winter Soldier? Um, not sure, but I think, I think these expand 2001 to 2005. Um, I tell you, if, if JLA 66 had any significance... There was like an almost entire box of JLA sixty six newsstand. It was ridiculous, but uh, wow. hey, I'm ha I, I have to, I, you know, I'm I'm happy with this. I got a short box full of of really newsstands. Nice. Yeah, so let me show just um, one or two more things. I know we were talking about DCUs earlier. I I picked this up um, in eBay. It was mixed in wow. with like a five book lot. Wow, this one I've always felt is really it doesn't get its due you know everyone's always looking for the death of superman especially man of steel 20 and um and 77 uh yeah superman 77 which definitely they're they're super tough um but the superman 100 um uh dcu uh death of clark Kent, uh is also hard to come across uh, I believe it's because I did see one time, I think it's on the CGC, DC Universe thread, someone picked up three two-packs that this was included in. So I don't want to hear anyone going, yeah, but there's someone who picked up three two-packs that had Superman 100 in it. Well, right. you know, you know that that that's a minor miracle, right? But usually th this is one of the harder to, to find 
Um, I've never uh, seen one in real life. Yeah, this is only the, I think it's only the second or third one I've, I've had. So um, if you see it, definitely pick it up. I don't think it gets its due. Um, and then I'll show one slab that I picked up. I thought I had another one, but uh, oh yeah, it's in the it's in the background. Maybe I'll show it another podcast. Um, but um, Annihilation Conquest nine point four picked it up for I think it was less than fifty bucks. Um, you know when I you know do our our top ten list, um, you know a lot of con a lot of my uh, contributions are things that are out of favor, but you know yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy is is off people's radar. But you know, once the holiday special approaches, and once the Guardians of the Galaxy three approaches, I mean, I, I may not even keep it in the holder. I may, you know, break it out, list it raw sure. as a nine four, um, and uh, you know, I can easily see this being you know a hundred fifty um, or or more, you know. So it's um, going to heat up when we get closer yeah. to Thor four. I mean, James yeah. Gunn's are. Just recently, I think it was like last week in a tweet, confirmed that he's consulting in Thor 4. You know, right. and they're confirmed Guardians characters. But I mean, that's smart. Guardians is way out there too. We should be speculating yeah. on on those kind of books. Blade also, right. stuff like that. And also, you know, I don't buy into the myth that, you know, every 9 4 can be turned into 9 8. And I, I mean, I, I see it on, I don't know if I could get it on the, um, on the camera, but there is a, um, there's a, a, a pronounced spine tick on the back. I don't think that's uh, I the uh, graders. And there's also a, um, let me see if I can get it. Uh, yeah. Like a sort of a blunted uh, corner uh, near the spot, the, the corner near the spine. Um, so I don't, I don't, you know, maybe I could get it bumped up to nine six, but it's probably not worth the trouble. So. Stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm El Cheapo. I don't even like to spend fifty bucks, but it, it was it was too hard to pass up. I mean, it, it's 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 just a uh, uh, our friend Mr. Longshore would call it a layup. It's it's going to be a hundred fifty dollar raw book, absolutely. Uh, when we get closer, so yeah, that's all I got. Good deal, brother Phil. All right, so really quick, I um, want to go over uh, the Magnificent Miss Marvel run that uh, has the um, has the Storm Ranger uh, keys. So we have here um, Magnificent Miss Marvel 5, second print, and this homages, this story homages Secret Wars 8, okay? This, you get the uh, first appearance of the Storm Ranger suit. The suit isn't sentient. The uh, the Kree that shows up on the monitor, um, that is not Storm Ranger. It is the last, the last host of the suit. Okay. So now we have connecting set seven, eight, and nine. Okay. You have the first cameo appearance of uh, Becky St. Jude. Lockdown, uh, who is friends with Kamala, then they turn on. She turns on her on the, in the in the Carol Cadets, and um, she has this really cool battle suit. And she's a pretty good villain in the series, so it's another good person, a uh, villain character to speculate on for the Disney Plus series. And the first full is in um, number eight. You get the second print, and then with the connecting covers have the first cover appearance of Storm Ranger in number nine. She does not cameo in this. Number 10 is we get the cameo. So it acts like ASM 299 with the Venom appearance. So we had the Secret Wars 8 homage, and then we have a 299 story homage. And in the last couple panels, we see Storm Ranger. And then we see the last page as the cover in the second print. Then we have Magnificent Miss Marvel number 11. This is the first full appearance of Storm Ranger. She's all throughout the story. It's a big battle. Um, so 
future is bright i think uh this 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 is 15 bucks this is 20 bucks about 15 to 20 bucks so you can find them they're pretty good books um so we got that out of the way um so let me do my pickups from online so i picked up um a few copies of uh spider gwen five aha variant oh wow nice when, dude that's such a great looking book a few when, copies i saw them <laughs> don't say i i got some okay um <laughs> so keep your eyes out uh this book was on a dip um I mean, I was looking at this very because Miles and Spider Gwen they don't have tons of characters to spec on. There's there's right. more coming up right now, right? The recent right. publication and Rich, you've talked about it, right? With uh, with Miles especially, right? But what else is there to play? You want to get you gotta you gotta get the variants. So this uh, David Aha variant was a uh, available at San Diego Comic Con, and from time to time this one goes ghost. So. Um, Mr. Long, uh, Ben, right? So he he has the Aha uh, Hawkeye in the, in his background, and um, I mean this was around the same year I think, or the same year I think in 2016. And that was a good book, I think, as a variant play for modern, is is a good one. Um, I picked up a a three comic book bot, um, and uh, I swear the. The postman turned into the Incredible Hulk and just punched a big dent into it. I was scared as hell, and I was hoping it wasn't uh, these books, but thank God they were in top loaders. Oh wow! Mm. Wow! I scored, I scored these for 180. Get the fuck out of here! Yeah, newsstand, very nice. fine plus first Lando, which has popped thousand dollars a nine eight right now, right? This one is never going back down, I think. This is just forever going to be up. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, could this be like the next GSX-1? You know what I mean? For copper? I don't know. It's possible. Definitely. Instance, the theater is always 150 bucks. A CGC 3.0 just sold for like 168 last night, I think, which is insane. Cool. And then this is the champ right here. I got a 9.4 Air the Empire 1. I was just super ecstatic. That's unbelievable. What a yeah. deal, dude. Yeah, it was good. It was cool. Um, so I went to Victory Comics. I don't know if you ever crossed over near Falls Church in DC. So I have. It's been a while. Oh, Steve, you've been? Okay. Yep. Nico, I don't know if you've ever been, but nah. no. So nah, this is oh my God. So this guy, he's the um so he's one of the very last dollar dealers like big time at shows so um i got the chance to talk to jeff weaver um really really quick um he's been able to open this whole time during the pandemic and he's the first like con vendor that i've seen since c2e2 so it was really really good just like kind of yeah. see him you know so it was like kind yeah. of seeing like a co-worker you know so yeah. it's strange not to see these guys um he thinks he thinks that um, w Wizard uh, Chicago might be the first show of the year in August. Really? So, wow. you know, the guy uh, has a lot of. I don't know if you ever seen him on CNN, but he's a he's been an advisor to Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of funny. One of the uh, customers actually asked him if he came up with the mem of Bernie and the Mittens. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, no, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. But he does a lot of marketing for Bernie. So really quick, um, so I dropped a, I had like eight hundred dollars retail, and I have some of the books to share. Um, so this is a uh, first appearance of Darth Kroll, uh, Star Wars Legacy thirteen. There wasn't a bunch of Star Wars. Um, a lot of people have been coming through. YouTube, other YouTubers, other dealers had told me to go. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna challenge myself and see what else I can find. Um, I got the X-Wing Rose Squadron Wizard and a half with the COA. It, this one did go up, but now it's it's down right now. Good good dip buy. Got a Akira one. Can't ten beat that bucks. Book, dude. Get I mean, out of town. Very what fine. God. Ten bucks. Unbelievable. My God. Love um, that. Give me my freaking movie. 
I mean, I just want this for inventory. It was 40 bucks. They're asking 40. Wow. I mean, it's a clean I know, but someone got sweaty fingerprints and man, I got yeah. fingerprint oil here. But hey, you know what? It's a clean static one. You know he's gonna be big. Yep. Um this was ten bucks. Uh, Michelangelo one micro series. I know. Nice. Uh, Marvel Chillers three. This book's down, but it's been well liked throughout the past several years. The spec is dead, but hey, you know, you never know, right? With all this, yep. dude. I like. Uh, I like. I was just thinking about this earlier today. Um, Howard the Duck, Tigra, the uh, Killer Monkey, whatever the hell his name is, Monkey, Pit Monkey. Uh, like Monkey. all of those properties that Marvel has blessed, they're more probable than any of the non-anointed properties to actually have something done with them. Marvel's already signaled like we like those ones. I, I think the Tiger book's smart, man. I really do. Dazzler. Oh, oh. Ten, <laughs> bucks. ten bucks! Wow! I man. couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. You know, I was talking to Dimitri, and he was like, "Yeah, I was over there two weeks ago," I, and I was like, "Oh yeah, did you did you look through the more uh, Spidey Super Stories?" He's like, "Oh yeah, I got the Jaws one." Like, did you did you see? Did you see this one, dude? <laughs> <laughs> He's got to tune in more. You know, <laughs> that's our buddy. Yeah. I'm trying to drag him on a podcast. Incidentally, uh, when he watches this, no, I haven't given up. I mean, I was just so happy to see Silver Age. Amen. You know, like you can't. I mean, you can't buy like vintage like on eBay anymore. This is like a hundred bucks, you know. And he had it at thirty. Yeah, color is nice on that. Like, uh, Victor Comics. You know, I mean, he he knows to like not like. Hey, I can't charge Comic Con prices for everything. I mean, he has to protect himself on some books for sure, you know. But I mean, he has to have value for certain people. For nice. regular customers, this was five bucks, and we were talking about oh. Constantine and you know Justice League. You know, Dark is, is still a, a good, good spec. So, um, DC Horror Vintage still good, I think. You know, here's a uh, number six for TM TMNT. Hey, not bad. It was a it was a nine zero. He was charging nine bucks. Sure, why not? You know. Uh, first appearance of Lucifer. So I, I arrived at the shop like an hour after that KCA alert. So this is pretty ghost right <laughs> now. KCA. <laughs> uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. That's not Lucifer. That's a uh, Merv Pumpkin. This is Lucifer. There we go. Mm. My bad. My bad. That's kind of ghost right now. I paid market for this book. Um, CBSI has done their monster, monster uh, first appearance list. So I've been waiting like to go to a local comic book shop to pick up some of these keys. And um, you know what? First print. Yeah. It's a BG. Maybe bumpable to a 5.0. It was 60 bucks, but it's an inventory play for me. I will pay market for this book. I get to see it, right? And um, I'll buy it. You know, I'll hold on to it for a little bit. Yeah. Number 13. Nico, do you know this one? No. Tell me more. Uh, Shoot, I had it up here really quick, but <laughs> yeah, it has the first appearance of someone. Important. Yeah. I'm only buying the G.I. Joes that have a lot of appearances in the in the cartoons. And I really like these books. Um, I, ha I found four copies of this one. Uh, two first prints and two second prints. Uh, first full uh, Destro. I mean, the artwork looks really, 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 like, exact with the cartoons we watched as kids growing up in the 80s, you know? I know you like this book, Nico. Hell yeah, I do. Yeah. So first Roadblock, first Duke. Yeah, I'll do it. Could be our boys. There's another first appearance. I forget who it is, but I knew I knew this person had a good... A couple characters were pretty good. There's a newsstand of this one. Has a oh, couple clues yeah. in it. I'll no. get it. You know, it goes for like fifteen to twenty online. Um, this was up on the wall, and um, I was like, "Holy crap!" First Impossible Man, FF eleven. 
it's a good, I think, or I, I think it maxes out a GD, uh, good plus, but these have been ghosting. Like, I think, I think I saw like a, a 2.5 go for like 275, and he had it up on the wall for 100. I picked wow. it up. Staples are attached. Rusty staples, but eh, why not, you know? This, this guy, 15 bucks, Sports Illustrated one. I don't buy it. Wow. I do not buy it. It's from 1954. That's unbelievable. I definitely That's a great it. shot, too. I mean, I like almost want to grade this and just you have kind of to grade it, preserve yeah. it. It's got the um, the uh, original inserts in it, but it was 15 bucks. I'm like, how do all these dealers and YouTubers? I mean, they're good guys. All these vendors I know, they 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 get good stuff. Any idea how much that sells for? Because I have uh, no idea. A VG sold for uh 125. A really? I think this wow. one looks a lot better. Yeah, and for the record, I think there's a ton of uh, opportunity with those Sports Illustrated, like the first Michael Jordan in uh, with uh, uh, the uh, North Carolina outfit right. is dirt cheap. Yeah, and like first LeBron, I don't even know those things are going for like big bucks, you know. Um, Green Lantern too. I mean, there's not a lot of inventory on this. I'm buying it, you know. Four point five, I'll get it. You know, and uh, last one that thank God I was there when uh, I got that alert. Oh wow! That the actual oh, yeah. monger is coming back. Um, I think I paid a hundred bucks for this one, a five zero. It's not bumpable, but you know, people want slabs. You know, yeah. so yeah, that's a quick rehash of what I picked up this week. Good stuff. Good stinking stuff. It's a Richie, big haul. Yeah, I got a few. Nothing big. And then I did the I pulled a Dino and went through my long boxes and found some stuff I forgot about or didn't even know I had. But um so I don't know. I mean, these are like five bucks a piece right now. I think some some sellers are trying to sell them for like twelve, which at right at the time right now, they're probably that's probably a little bit over exaggerated, but I think there's huge opportunity in these these local comic shop day um, uh, foils of something is killing the children one. Um, so I just read number fourteen. I've read this series one through thirteen. I have I've only read fourteen once, but I've read one through thirteen at least five times and i and and each time i read it i i i understand more and more what's going on there's no way that they're not going to do this uh, 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 adapt this onto a series or a movie i mean it, it's but i have to say is is i don't know how they're going to make it anything less than rated r i mean it is when you really get into this 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 series you realize this is some brutal stuff even though kids are involved and, and stuff like that. So I think these things have huge opportunity. I don't know. I, what is there? Six prints of something is killing the children. So what would this be? A seventh print? Yeah. I mean, l let me ask you this. Have the comic cron numbers come out for the foil? Um, I, I, well, the October ones dropped and, um, the estimates, they're just estimates, the highs and the lows for October. Um, and that was about two weeks ago. So I'm expecting November, December to come out soon. So we'll see. I mean, you know, um, and then since we're on something is killing the children, I know I had two of these. So there's either, either I sold it already for way less because I remember finding a bunch of late printing, um, number ones through fours. Wow. And I remember they were first starting to spike during Miles Mania. And I remember selling them for like 30 to 60 bucks. But this one right here, I, I know for a fact I got two of them, which is something that's killing the children, number four, second print. And recent sales on this book have been between 200 to 350 bucks. And this thing is 9-8 worthy. There is a little a smudge on here, but I – but I've already got a, a, a fragrance free, a lotion free cotton round and wiped it off. It came right off. So I'm definitely going to probably grade this one. Um, 
Okay, I found this uh, digging um, during my birthday. I completely forgot about it to, to um, mention it to you guys. I don't know if you remember oh, wow. this, but this Hell is that yeah. in, in, um, in, in Huckley uh, X23 uh, trade. Um, I love this this cover. It's just and there's been so many um, store variants and exclusive that have, you know, I don't know. I want to say homage this cover, so to speak. You know, um, let's great see. Book. Ben tipped me off of this. This was on FOC three weeks ago, and and I, I've been forcing myself to try to get into Buffy because I used to watch Riverdale. You know, so that whole like you know universe you know buffy riverdale universe so i'm trying to understand archie comics and buffy and what have you so um i was looking at a few one shots that were coming out and and what have you and um and then with buffy recently there's um there's there was a first appearance first appearance of faith that was on foc that's likely going to be in the series but long story short this book was on foc and i didn't know that there was um there was the um the cover swipe uh store variant which is uh for our listeners is marvel spotlight number five which is the first appearance of the ghost rider johnny blaze and um this book is uh, riverdale uh presents south side serpents number one and it's pretty cool it's really awesome. So instead of the fifteen cent, it's fifteen dollars because you know it was the price. And this is this is what I was telling you guys backstage. What I really liked about it, it kind of freaked me out at first. But um, so the artist who did the did the swipe, I'll try to put it close to the camera here. Let's see if I can do it here. Yeah, we quick. see it. You see the spine ticks? Yeah, he distressed it. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, it, it, I was like, at first, you, I, you know, I told you guys, I was like, what the hell? I just got these. I got spine ticks all over. And then I looked again. I was like, wait a minute. This is a modern book. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. And I got, I got, actually got four of them, but I gave one to Ben. So I have three left. And then um, I found this on Mercari for 25 bucks, and it looks really nice. So I went ahead and picked it up. Oh, I, yeah. I think I offered the guy 18. He countered at like 20 and it was 20 shipped or maybe 21 shipped Yeah, media mail, whatever. I don't really care, but it, it was a, it's a really nice copy of Wolverine one, which, you know, is the first ongoing series after the Frank Miller or the Claremont Miller uh, limited uh, series. And I believe that's the first appearance of patch, right? Absolutely. is. Right. Mm -hmm. I think this is a great book. I think this is a great play too, especially if you're priced out of books like Incredible Hulk 180, 181, and GSX one, and you know 182, what have you. I think this is a, a solid play. Plus, I like those Claremont uh, Miller limited series books too, especially number one. I, I, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm shocked no one has uh, recommended uh, either or both of those books to the spec ten list. I think uh, it's just a matter of time before uh, they show up there. That's my guess. Yeah, I, I, I really like that book. Um, and uh, I, I, to be honest with you, this I, I prefer a newsstand, right? <laughs> or a, uh, uh, you know, just a high-grade newsstand. But you know what? I, I'll take a high-grade uh, direct edition all day of this book. And it's, uh, yeah. it's my third. There's money. No, I mean, you know, the, it's kind of interesting because that usually with um, during around this time, maybe this is either a little after uh, with direct, you had the Spider-Man, but it was like at the all black one. And this would be like this would be filled in with black. And in the new stem, this would be blocked off. Right. Mm -hmm. well, this one actually has the direct and it's blocked off. So it, like an, it's like it's like half and half. So I thought that, that was interesting, but yeah, that's a, it's a good book. It's a good spec play. And like I said, if you're priced out of those other ones, um, this one, I got at auction for dirt cheap. Wow. And, um, I thought it was a good play with the Ant-Man three, you know, uh, casted and, and ready to rock and all the wonderful things and speculations that are going to be happening in quantum mania, the fantastic four Kang, what have you um this is uh marvel premiere 47 this is when uh scott lang becomes the ant-man right oh, yeah. right? oh yeah and then um 
let's see. Here are okay. I got this one digging that I didn't mention. I didn't really think it was a big deal until I put it on my and I decided to say, hey, you know what? Let's tell them about this. This is Silver Surfer number two. Um, it's not high grade. It's probably a at best probably a five five at best. I mean, if I pressed it, it's got you know color breaks. It's got the square bound spine. But this is uh, you know I. If you're priced out of like FF48, 49, um, and even 50, I mean, even though it's not a first, but it's such an iconic cover or what have you, um, you know, I think the next play would be the Silver Surfer run, right? And would be number one. And then you would go and go down the list. Well, this one actually has the first appearance of one of his enemies. It's the, uh, I think they're called the Badoon race. And, um, yeah, that's the first appearance of the Badoon. I think that's what they're called. But they're actually a race, a race of creature. And this is one of them right here. So, and then um, let's I see think here. We're going to be collecting that run uh, and try to grab every issue because it's so short. Um, it was a hell of a lot cheaper to do it two years ago. Uh, now that Mephisto's jumped up, the price of the uh, Thor Surfer book just keeps yeah, going up. One, three, and four a is. It's just like such real. a great coveted run. You know, the one that's, that's smart you brought that up because I think it's the last issue. I think it's number 18. The one with Maybe. Spidey? I, I, I don't really he remember who's on the cover, but it's either 17 or 18. But I know it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful cover, and it's very hard to find. I mean, that book is it's probably the less printed book. I don't have numbers or anything for that series, but that book is definitely on my radar, and I would definitely – be looking at it, you know, or from investment point of view. This is Ice Cream Man 22. This is the, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, John Jiang, I think his name is. This oh. is the first, what was it, Phil? Do you know? Or? Oh, oh, no, you're right. Okay. And then th this was an exclusive cover that um, it went on FOC. I don't know, last year, November, what have you, and everybody's going crazy for the virgins. But, hey, I like trades, you know, and um, I went ahead and got a couple of them. It comes with a COA. It's a beautiful nice. cover. You know, Ice Cream Man's on fire right now, literally. Um, this is uh, one of the books I found in my own long box. I had no idea I owned, but uh, Mel turned me on. And to this book, and this is Bitterroot number four, the David Mack cover. This book has fluctuated. This cover has fluctuated. I've seen sales in the hundreds, and I've seen sales in the 15 to 20 range. It's like a $30, $40 book. I know for sure I got it for cover. I got don't it sell that for 30 or 40 bucks, dude. You hold no, on to those keep... better. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> and then um, the last thing I want to show, which I thought was pretty interesting, is, is that. Um, I got this book. It was a gift, but I know what they paid for it. And they got it for me like last year. And when I checked out prices, the price is doubled on this one. Wow. So I thought this is Daredevil 131. This is your first appearance, first cover appearance, and first origin told of this guy. Bullseye. So, yeah, that's it. Banger. <laughs> All right, Carter, uh, the, now the moment that everyone has been waiting for. Uh, cause us all shame. Make us feel worse about ourselves and our ability to collect comics. <laughs> well, I, I doubt that's going to happen, but um, I'll show you. Uh, I don't know. Dude, you hit a number on me today. Give them the backstory. Of, um, you know, well, and I went to a dollar sale. We went, yeah, we went to. I left him behind. <laughs> I went to a dollar sale. You, you you abandoned me, and I abandoned George. Hurt hurt me on the inside, as Jeez. as I should as I should have, and I'm glad <laughs> I did. But um, I, we'll start with this book. Um, this was not a dollar. This was twenty bucks. So we have Sally Forth number one from uh, 1977. Uh, I, picked, I got this for twenty bucks, and I also picked up the uh, set of uh, one through four. So here's a uh, four. Go, Sally, go. Four, th four, three, and two for uh, $20 each. And uh, here's some books that I picked up. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I'll show you the dollar books really fast. 
Uh, so we have Heroes Reborn, number one, Platinum Edition. Ooh. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I, hard to find? Uh, Who knows? I, I, okay. When the uh, opportunity, uh, I wouldn't be holding on to it. You okay. Take that so, opportunity and run. So uh, Ricky, blah, 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 Ricky, blah, blah, blah. Oh, blah. Ricky, Ricky Lake. Barnes. Yeah, oh. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Um, I don't know if this is a first appearance or not. You know what I mean? Like maybe a first preview appearance. I don't know. I really don't know. I wish somebody would uh, help me out with that. But uh, it's, I found it. It's a platinum. I know the regular edition is just, um, it's just white text. So I found the platinum. Very happy about that. Um, Marvel Age. Marvel Age number 87. Nice. Nice. So uh, first preview of uh, Danny Ketch, uh, Ghost Rider. This book looks, Very cool. book is really nice. I'm surprised by that. Yeah, you get that in great shape. And for a dollar. Uh, new. I'm surprised by this book. This one is doing uh, pretty respectably. Yeah, uh, what? Like a $20 book? New Mutants Forever. Uh, number. It's a great cover. Number, yeah. Great looking magic cover. Hmm. Like, because I, I, I remember this book kind of like dipping a little bit, but now it's kind of like maybe a uh, what twenty dollar book or something like that. And um, I like this book, undervalued. Um, Ghost Rider number seventy five, first appearance of Steel Wind. So you never know. You never That's know. Hard. I bought it. There's, there's not there's a lot of supporting characters. It's exactly. Oh, I like the last issue of that run too. I was so gonna ask you what number is that? The last that's issue. number 70. This is oh numbers uh the last issue? Yeah. 81, I think. 81, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You'll know yeah. when you see it. Um, I like that. No, I saw the I found this book this week for a cover price. So Uncanny Avengers number 14, second print. And you see the I never seen uh, that before. The uh black the black border instead of red. Very nice. I don't know. It just it, it, it pops a little bit it more pops, than the. Right. It's the exact same image, but it pops a little bit more in the black. You know what I mean? It looks like nice. movie. I'm digging that. Like and uh, you know what? We'll just get to. Oh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa! Here's something I picked up uh, this week as well. Something I picked up this week. Uh, let's. What am I going to show you? Uh, you know what? Oh, yeah. We'll just jump right to it. <laughs> we'll just jump right to it. Look at that. Look at Boom. that. Jesus Lord. Has put this. Ooh, the heat. Okay. So uh, we put this we put this on my list what maybe a week ago or something like that. Yeah. Okay. And then uh when I when I abandoned George, I didn't I didn't know we were to, I didn't know we were uh digging the guy. I didn't know. I didn't know. Sure. I didn't know. God. Oh, excuse me. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> but um, but yeah, we uh, I, I made my way to a store, and I'm just like, this is this is what I was looking for at that dollar sale. I was hope I was holding out hope, maybe, you know, maybe in that basement, maybe in the um, maybe in that, maybe on the floor, I would find something. You know what I mean? No luck. And then um, I went to the, st- and then I went to this next store, which is about forty-five minutes away. And I'm looking in the Antarctic Press, and it was like it was like this much Antarctic Press in that box. Okay, it was that much, and I'm just thinking, it can't, nothing can be in there, nothing, nothing. And sure as shit, we wow. find Sentai number two. What is this? The first appearance of the. Uh, Power Rangers, yeah, unbelievable. You love that okay. when you yeah. and it, you just doubt it, and it's, you see it, and you're just like, you have to uh, double. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. Am I dreaming? You know, right. So now, so see, now I'm spoiled. Now I'm spoiled. Now I think, oh, I could just go to this store. I can go to that <laughs> store. I can go to that store. I can go to that store and pick, you know, and pick one up. You know what I mean? So. It, Good stuff. Now, now, my confidence, now my confidence is up. So uh, it's great timing. A lot going on right now. Yes, it mind. is. Oh my God, Power Rangers and Woo. wow, this '90s nostalgia in general. Definitely.